Hey, what's up everyone? We're gonna do another data science interview question today. And so in this question, we're gonna do a medium difficulty question from Amazon. And I left a link for the question in the description. So the problem we're doing today is called highest cost orders. And in it, we are told to find the customer with the highest total order cost between February 1st, 2019 to May 1st, 2019. Uh, and also tells us for simplicity, you can assume that every first name in the data set is unique. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. And I think that the biggest thing that jumps out to me in this question is that we're working with dates and times. So that's gonna be an important concept to know in Python pandas. So we see that we have this range here. So let's look at the data. And so we can see this by clicking Alt Enter. Uh, and if this doesn't output down here for you, you probably just need to create an account or log in. So do that real quick. I think the way that you're gonna get the most out of a, this problem is to feel free to pause the video and try it on your own and then resume the video when you wanna see how I would solve this problem. But here we have the customer's data. We have an ID, a first name, last name, etc. We also have another data frame here, the orders data frame. So let's look at that real quick. Orders. Uh, okay, so we have an order ID, a customer ID, um, order quantity, and total order cost. So one of the big things we're going to want to do is link these two tables together. But one question I have first is let's just get comfortable with our data. And one thing that I'm immediately curious about is like, is this the an order ID or is this the customer ID? I guess it's definitely the customer ID. So that's what we're gonna be using to link to the other table. So we wanna connect customer ID with customer ID here in the orders table. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we're joining two tables in Python pandas, there's two ways to really go about this. Uh, the two immediate functions that come to mind are a join or a merge. By default, the join we'll use your index column in both of these data frames. So the index column is gonna be the farthest column to the left. So it's gonna be the ID column here for customers, and it's going to be the ID frame here, or ID column here for orders. But because we wanna ultimately combine customer ID with the ID in the customers table, join is probably not gonna be the best function for us. Let's instead use a merge. Very, very similar, but we can specify that we want to combine on different columns than just that leftmost index column. So let's do that. So, and if it helps, you know, look up pandas merge uh, Python or something like that. We should be able to find documentation. Um, and we see that you do data frame.merge, you call it on the left data frame, pass in the right, and then you can also pass in which columns you wanna merge the two on and some additional properties. Uh, and if you scroll down, you should be able to see examples. Uh, so this is really gonna be what we wanna use, something like this, make this a little bit bigger. But we have our left data frame, which is the customers. We have a right data frame, which is the orders, and we'll combine the two. So we got DF1, that's gonna be customers, and we wanna merge that with the orders. And it might make sense to make the orders the left one and the customers on the right. Because I feel like each order you kind of associate with a customer as opposed to like uh, seeing, you know, the customer first uh, and then like seeing their individual order details on the right. This is, you know, a small little detail doesn't really matter when you analyze the data, but I'm just thinking it might be easier. So on the orders, data frame we want to use the left on will be the id or i guess the customer id and the right on will be the just regular id so the customers we just want to take the id but we want to match it to the customer id let's run that uh, okay so we see like for these first three orders they're all by the same guy um, and then what I think we want to do, this is, you know, it's maybe not specified clearly in the problem, but I'm thinking that if the order date is the same, 
we merge those costs together. I think that they're all part of the same order. Uh, it's hard to know for sure, but that's my gut feeling on this. So if we find we get the wrong answer, we can go back and maybe try something else. But I'm thinking that we wanna merge all of these orders based on order date. So how can we do that? We're gonna do order, and let's call this, you know, I'll just call this DF, data frame. Our new data frame is the merge of these. It's data frame dot group by, group by on customer ID, and also the order date. And then we will sum those columns. Let's run that. And I think we will want to reset the index. So one thing that happens here is we lost the name and some of the things we joined. So I wonder if we can get that back and that might be just a property of how we do the sum. So pandas sum or group by sum keep uh, string columns. I don't know, something like that is what I, Python keep other columns while using sum with group by. Okay, so what we could do is just add additional properties here to the group by, it makes sense to do that. Yeah, that is easy enough. So we do customer ID, order date, you know, might as well put their first name here too, because we need that. Uh, and then we can run this again. Okay, and now we get that name that we are looking for. So I think the next thing is, um, I'll just call this like total DF equals this. Um, now that we have total DF, what we really need to do is just find the highest cost, highest total cost. We look at the total table again. So we wanna find the highest order cost that fits in the date range that we're looking for. Um, so first let's just filter by the date range. And I don't know if this column will be date time by default. Let's see, it looks like it is. So that's nice. We don't have to convert this column to date time. So now we just need to sort by date times. And what we can do is it should be as easy as doing total DF order date is like we can directly use like greater than or equal to here. So we want it to be greater than or equal to um, 2019-0201 and we want it to be I'll make this full screen so you can see. Uh, order date. So if this wasn't a date time column, we couldn't directly do this. We'd first have to convert the, the column to date time, but because it is, we can do this directly. And I'll say less than 2019-501. That should work. Let's see if that filters down the data. and. Because we have two conditions in here, I think we have to use parentheses to separate out the logic. We can actually see if it works or not. I'll run it. Yeah, so it's complaining right now. Curious if this will work. Oh uh, yes, it worked, nice. And does that give us what we're looking for? It looks like all these, these ranges are, are proper. Um, that's awesome. So now we have, bear with me, make this a little bigger so you can see, um, filtered DF, I'll call it. Filtered DF is all of these sums uh, in our date range that we're looking for. So now we just really need to take get the max of this. And we can do this by doing a sort. I think sort values is the... Uh, 
uh, and we want to sort it by order cost. Okay, and so let's see what we get. Uh, we want reverse equals true because it's sorted in the wrong order right now. Reverse. Pandas sort values reverse. I think there's some sort of uh, ascending. Okay. Ascending equals false. Okay, and so in the problem, what we wanted to get was to output their first name, total cost of their items, and the date. So all we need here is first name, first name, order date, and order cost. Okay, finally, we want to just get that first row. So we could just do dot head of one if we really wanted to. Let's now check the solution. Okay, so we're not getting the correct answer here. So why would that be? And I think sometimes to make it easier, you know, go back to the start, like, let's just look at our data frame and look at, at maybe the date that Mia is ordering on. So 2019 order date equals equals 2019 04-19. Uh, and so we see Mia, 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 Mia Owen, we see two items. We see order cost 30, order cost 200. Uh, so it should give us 230. Why would that not be giving us the right answer? Um, and you know, the, the only thing that I can envision, and sometimes I would say it's, it's fine if you are kind of stumped and, and need to check something, you know, if you need to, you can feel free to check the expected output. And here we see that Mia max cost is 430, but we're getting 230. And the thing that is off here is that we also need to factor in this order quantity. And that's something that I thought was factored into the order cost, but it's good to, you know, clarify these things. So what I, I'm seeing now is that we have to or, multiply the order cost by the order quantity to get the total amount. So realistically, we probably should create another column that's just called like total cost. So maybe we say DF total cost is equal to DF um, order quantity times DF order cost. And then what we wanna do here when we are getting our final answer, so that gives us this new column. Then when we're getting our final answer, we wanna not look at and sort by order cost, we wanna sort by total cost. And we wanna add total cost to our filter here, or our final kind of filter here, run that. Now let's look at our filtered data frame. Now we see Mia 430, um, and I think we can probably check solution here, incorrect. I did see the expected output, so I mean, probably just running this without anything would be the first step. And now we see we get the two names that we saw in the expected output. So if I did head two here, I could just get those first two rows. And I should be able to now check solution. 
Yay, we got it. So yeah, there's a little bit of a hurdle there at the end, but hopefully the process made sense. Uh, and you know, you kind of have to think about those details as you do the problem because you get stumped and run into a roadblock as uh, as I did as I was trying to solve this because I, I missed that little point of uh, total cost. All right, hopefully this problem walkthrough was helpful. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up uh, and also subscribe if you haven't already. I'll probably do a lot more of these, so be prepared, but also gonna be trying to post some other content on this channel as well. Peace out.